안녕하십니까 혈치과 원장 박정철입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Park j o n g c h e o of h y o Dental Clinic. Today, I'm going to talk about MS implant. Let me briefly explain about MS implant. MS implant is one body implant. Implant and abutment are in one piece. It's a one body implant. You do not use screw here. This is a one piece implant. MS implant can be divided into three. MS narrow ridge type implant is for crown fabrication. Another is MS denture implant, which can be used for denture support. Another one is MS provisional used for provisional fabrication. Because of time constraint, I'm going to focus on MS narrow ridge. As mentioned, the implant is one piece implant, and surgery is done in one stage manner. Implant is placed tissue level. The recommended placement torque is over 30 newton centimeters. You need to use MS kit, which is a specialized surgical kit for placing MS implants. The surface can be divided into SA and RBM. If you look at the structure of MS implant narrow ridge, this is the implant body. The length and diameter of the implant body is the same with the implant itself. The gingival height, which is in contact with soft tissue, can be divided into 2.5 and 4. This is where abutment crown is connected. You can set the margin. On top of it, crown is mounted. MS implant. The diameters range from 2.0, 2.5, and 3.0. The length is 8.5, 10 mm, 11.5, and 13 mm. As mentioned, the gingival height can be divided into 2.5 and 4 mm. You can select it depending on the thickness of soft tissue. The surface can be divided into SA and RA. Looking at the MS narrow implant indications, it can be used for narrow ridges, especially the lower anterior. If the bony width is narrow, it can be used in the case of upper lateral incisor. If the ridge is narrow, you can use it. One body implant needs to be placed in one stage surgery. In the case of upper lateral incisor, it has aesthetic demands. It can be limiting, but still, if the ridge is narrow, you can use it. You need to use MS kit to place the MS narrow ridge implant. A dedicated surgical kit needs to be used. The surgical kit can be largely divided into two components. The first is the drilling tool to punch a hole in the bone, and second is the implant installation tool. Looking at different components, the drilling tool consists of lance drill. This is also included in one to two taper kit. It's used to mark the area of implant placement. The tip is pointy, so you use it for marking. There's no stopper, and shank is short here. And in this one, there is a stopper, and shank is longer. You can choose depending on your preferences. Those who do not have good eyesight prefer this kind of drill. Second is parallel pin. This one 
is similar to that of wanted to taper kits pin. If you look over here, the MS implant looks different from TS or SS implants, and there is a parallel pin that reflects the form of a one piece abutment here. If you use the parallel pin, you can visually see how the implant is placed. It's favorable to use parallel pins. Next is twist drill. You first mark the implant position with lance drill and you widen the hole with a twist drill. When placing MS implant, the MS implant is a narrow diameter implant, therefore, it is placed with drilling once or twice. So drilling is very important. You use a lance drill and twist drill each once. When you use twist drill, you need to pay attention to the path and direction. The diameter of twist drill range from 1.8 to 2.3 and 2.5. There's the one with short shank and long shank. If there's interference with adjacent teeth, at times, visually, you cannot really see the path and placement direction if you use the short one. If you use the long one, it can be more favorable in checking the direction and the angle. Also, there is a drill extension as mentioned. If there is interference from the adjacent teeth at times, there can be deviation in drill path and direction. In this case, if you use drill extension, the drill becomes elongated and in checking the direction, it becomes more favorable. Next is depth gauge. There are two different tips. On one side, it is used to check the drilling depths and the second one, in the case of MS provisional, it can be bent. MS narrow bridge cannot be bent, but in the case of MS provisional, bending is possible. There is a bending tool on the other side of depth gauge. Next is installation tool of MS kit. First is machined driver. You can connect the machine driver with handpiece and place the implant. If you look at the driver, there are different specifications, short one and long one. Narrow rich implant and provisional implant, they have the same form, so you can use this driver, but denture type has different uh, design. You need to use a different machine driver. If you look over here, there's a groove on the side. You can tell the difference by looking at the groove. You do not place the implant 100% with machine driver. Depths should be adjusted using torque driver. This is the same. For a torque driver, you can use the same one for narrow, rich, and provisional. And as for denture type, there is a groove here. So you can differentiate it. Ratchet wrench, this is what you're used to. You can connect it to torque driver to adjust the placement depth in the final stage. What is unique about MS kit is that it has driver separator. When you place implant with machine driver or torque driver, at times it can get locked and it's difficult to detach. The driver. In this case, so you can use drill separator included here. There's a hole in the torque driver and using the lever effect, you can detach it. 
There is a MS removal tool. MS implant does not fracture frequently, but at times it does. If there is a fracture, it can be quite complicated to remove. You need to remove the surrounding bone to remove the implant. There is the MS removal tool shaped like a trapline bird. If you rotate it counterclockwise, the bone will be prepped and within the removal tool there is thread like this and if you rotate it counterclockwise the fractured ms implant will be connected and it will come off ms removal tool can be used to remove ms implant let me talk about how I place MS Narrow Ridge Implant, 2.5 by 13 millimeter implant. This is drilling process. Before drilling, I design the final prosthesis and put that in my head and I start drilling. When I drill, I use lens drill first. Not a lot of drilling is involved in placing MS implant. Once or twice would suffice. Therefore, you need to pay a lot of attention on uh, the position, direction, and angle in using lens drill. It really determines the entire surgery. When you use lens drill, you need to pay a lot of attention in angle and direction. Once uh, drilling is done, you use the parallel pin which resembles uh, MS implant and then you can get a lot of help in how the abutment will go in. Next, a twisted drill is used to expand the hole. Depth gauge is used to check the drill hole. Machine driver is used to place the implant and implant is not placed 100% with machine driver. You use it by about 80%. You leave about one or two millimeter. The final implant placement depth is adjusted using torque driver and ratchet. You need to accurately adjust the implant placement depths. And this is how implant placement is completed. Impression is taken to fabricate prosthesis. There's a special impression coping. Impression coping for MS implant exists. It clips on. You take impression after that. You use MS implants analog. You can create model and using this you can fabricate provisional. There is also a provisional cap to fabricate provisional or you can just fabricate final prosthesis. You can make provisional with an oral cavity. Temporary coping can be connected at times. The distance between teeth can be too tight. In this case, you would not be able to connect the temporary coping. In this case, you can just fabricate it directly. If you use temporary coping, it clips on, therefore you do not need to use a cement. After surgery, in connecting provisional, it's quite burdensome to use cement. If you use temporary coping, such frustration can be reduced. Let me share with you a clinical case. The patient had crowding in the lower anterior. Number 41 was extracted and there was mobility in number 42 and the patient wanted an implant. The space in number 41 was very tight. I decided to place the implant in number 42 and I decided to use cantilever in number 41. Implant was placed. What is important is that within the narrow ridge, implant needs to go in the correct direction. It's, it's a bit of a stress that you only get one chance. 
2.5 by 10 millimeter implant was placed. The temporary crown was made. After six weeks, impression coping was connected to take impression, and final prosthesis was delivered in narrow lower ridge. It's a very good implant to be used. As mentioned, what is really tough about MS implant is you get only one chance in drilling. If the path is not right, it's very difficult to adjust the path. Ideally, we would be placing implants in nice ridges, but that does not happen really frequently. If the implant is excessively buckly inclined, then on the lingual side there can be perforation. There was lingual perforation in this case. If there's not a lot of space in marginal ridge and if there's compression that it can be bone loss. If the abutment sticks out towards the buckle area, we need to mount a prosthesis. It can be very difficult to make a good emergence profile. On this side, it will be under contour and on the other side, there will be over contour. Because of the abutment that sticks out, you need to add porcelain here, but it will end up too thick. If you fabricate class 3 type of prosthesis, you need to make it thin. In the case of PFM, opacity can show through. If you prep the abutment because of these reasons, the length of abutment will be reduced and it will lead to retention issues. It can be a bit of a pickle. If you place multiple implants, if it is placed with good path, then it is great, but if the angle is deviated, it can be in contact with adjacent teeth. If the path is not good, the insertion path will become unfavorable. This will lead to the necessity of prepping the implant. Because the path is not good, if you prep it, then retention will not be ideal. Depending on the implant direction, it will become very difficult to fabricate prosthesis. In this case, like using one guide, there is a 1MS guide. If you use this guide in determining the path, you can get a lot of help. If you use the dedicated 1MS kit, then you can get good results. Let me share with you a case. There was a need to extract the four upper anteriors. If you look at the root direction, they're all different. I am going to place in number two and two. If I place implant in the direction of natural tooth, we will get less than ideal results. So I need to switch the direction like this. But doing this, while doing extraction and immediate implant placement is very difficult. Using guide, you need to determine the path and direction and place the implant. Using that guide, you can just place the implant. It is easy. You'll be able to place the implant and connect the provisional, which would be prepared ahead. This is final prosthesis. If you use one MS guide, even in the case of narrow ridge in the lower anterior, you can get a lot of help in determining the path and angle of implant. Let me summarize. I've talked about MS implant. This is one body implant. You do one stage surgery and place the implant at tissue level. It can be frequently used in mandibular anterior area. There's a dedicated MS kit. I recommend you to use this dedicated kit. The MS implant is one body, so it is important to get good primary stability. There are three different types in MS implant. If you use guide, you'll be able to get very good help. There's a lot more that I would like to discuss, but because of the limitation of 
the lecture being held in online. If you go to offline master course, you'll be able to learn much more and do hands-on practice as well. I hope this was a chance for you to understand MS Implant better. I hope to see you offline as well. Thank you for watching.